There's, there's a great lack of understanding about human sexuality here, and great propaganda that we're all exposed to. Yeah, there, there is, in, in many people in this culture, an excessive focus on sexuality, thinking that's going to make me happy. The culture of you relies very heavily upon romantic feelings, sexual feelings, and they become a priority, and there you get into marked significant problems in relationships. They base their happiness too much on their sexual relationship, oftentimes because they want their spouse to make up for their unhappiness. They want their spouse to build their confidence. They want their spouse and their sex to relieve all their pressures and all their anxieties. And human sexuality is wonderful, and it's very special, but it can't do those other things. And for so many people, particularly men, they expect too much from human sexuality. They expect that many men rely on it for their confidence or to relieve their stress, and it's not meant for that purpose. But romantic love is in some way fickle, because our emotions are fickle. Many people marry based on romantic love. They really don't have a deep friendship. They don't have common goals. They're not willing to make sacrifices for one another. They're only basically concerned about maintaining their emotional highs, their sexual highs. That doesn't sustain a marriage. So one of the most major influences that helped me work with young people and married couples who struggle in the area of sexual conflicts, including pornography, has been understanding John Paul II's love and responsibility. This, this writing of John Paul II has enriched my professional life enormously to really try to understand more about the very nature of love because I think there's enormous confusion about the nature of love. John Paul II writes about romantic love, which one, in which one just is overwhelmed by a powerful feeling toward the loved one. It can be in some ways a selfish type of love because you're just, you can see you're so happy, and related, you just enjoy being with this person, you feel you can't live without this person. And John Paul II writes that romantic love must develop into true friendship. And what happens in true friendships that's different than romantic love? Well, in true friendship, you become more mature. You look at the other person and you see, you move beyond your own deep feeling of pleasure and happiness you have from this other person, and you see more deeply the goodness of that person. And then there, you, your, your will, it's not just your emotions, but your will locks in to that goodness. Love is willing the best for the other, wishing the best for the other. So you move just beyond your own feelings and sometimes selfish feelings of happiness that you have and you think, my happiness is going to come in major part from caring for this person, for willing the best for this person, for trying to protect this person, to help this person be all they can be. So the third aspect of love and responsibility that is extremely powerful is when John Paul II writes about betrothed love which moves beyond friendship, which is far deeper than friendship. In a betrothed love, sexual intimacy is an aspect of betrothed love. In betrothed love, you totally surrender yourself to the other. And John Paul II will write later in Theology of the Body that this total self-giving, this total surrendering of yourself to the other in the marital union the model for that is the Trinity, and this is unbelievable <laughs> in a certain sense. That this, here's the purification of sexuality, that the model for sexuality is not Hugh Hefner, it's not Playboy, it's not Alfred Kinsey. The model is the Trinity. There's the total flow of love within the Trinity. The Father doesn't control the Son, the Son doesn't control the Father, the Spirit doesn't control, they're just total self-giving. That, that, John Paul II says, that's the model for betrothed love. Those who understand this, when they are intimate, when they really understand the very nature of human sexuality, will relate that when they are intimate with their spouse, they have this experience, not just of the love of the spouse, but they have this experience almost of this other love far beyond, that the couple is entering in to this other, they're being pulled into this other love that's far beyond all human love, into Trinitarian love. And they experience that at moments in their sexual intimacy but also you enter into the experience of God's love, and then beyond that, not beyond that, but with that, you enter into creativity. So you enter into the becoming like God and, and being generous and being open to life, which then enriches the whole relationship more. So that just takes human sexuality and enriches it even more. That this, the love, by its very nature, as Thomas Aquinas writes, is diffusive. It, it goes out, it's generous. 
And so when you enter this true understanding of human sexuality, you want to have children and you rejoice in children. Children are not, they're not, a, they're not a burden, they're not a worry, they're a great gift to you. This, is a, this takes and this really makes human love, but it truly is very noble and sacred and holy. <laughs>